my name is Rose, and I am a local lover superhero. I don't care what Bellingham Alive says, or my mom, I'm not Wonder Woman. <laughs> and I have the pleasure of working for Sustainable Connections as the Green Building and Smart Growth Program Manager. <laughs> yep. I also have the pleasure of organizing Kapow. How many local lovers do we have out there? Yes, yes, yes. I can feel so much local love in this room, it makes me get the shivers. <laughs> the people of Bellingham love this community. We love our local bookstores, we love our local ice cream, our chocolate, our beer. We love our amazing downtown. And that's why we're here tonight. Sustainable Connections is all about local love. We have helped to create this entire room full an entire community full, an entire generation of local lovers. We are helping local businesses reach triple bottom line goals because we are a triple bottom line community. Yes, yes we are. Together we are changing the paradigm to people, planet, profit. Together we are ensuring our place is special and unique and full of love. If you're not already a member of Sustainable Connections and love what we do, show us some love back and become a member. I am fortunate in my position at Sustainable Connections to help transform and build a local economy built on sustainable practices. I also get to work on creative projects like Kapow! And I also have the pleasure of working with the greatest minds, the leading local businesses and organizations to be found on planet Earth. As a local lover, I've got to spread the local love. This project took a lot of people to help make it happen, so you guys will have to bear with us as we talk about each one, because I love them each. So when I started the competition, I went in search for organizations that had shared goals for strengthening our sense of place. There they are. <laughs> These organizations have been instrumental in its success. Our partnering super organizations include Allied Arts of Whatcom County, providing great guidance, the Downtown Bellingham Partnership for helping us get great beer, among other things, uh, the Northwest American Institute of Architects for Critical Thinking on Design, the Whatcom County Association of Realtors for their amazing raffle? Like, what? Uh, let's see, who else? Um, and a very, very, very big shout out to the city of Bellingham because without their support, both financial and their willingness to see these <laughs> really great ideas to fruition. They're sanctioning things that most cities don't, so it wouldn't be possible without the city of Bellingham. <laughs> the Green Building and Smart Growth Program at Sustainable Connections pro promotes healthy and efficient buildings, vibrant neighborhoods, and is sponsored by serious leaders in our community that care about our quality of life. They include the Sanitary Service Company, the Rose Foundation, Puget Sound Energy, Chuckanut Builders, the Barclay Cummer Company, Bellingham Bay Builders, 2020 Engineering, Lautenbach Recycling, and there's more. And finally, I want to thank our event sponsors and volunteers. These businesses understood our vision and care about downtown. Pacific Coast Realty, RMC Architects, Daylight Properties and the Skipping Stone Foundation all contributed financially to this and I am so grateful. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> Behind each of these organizations and businesses are people. They are local lovers. They are superheroes. And one such lover is Aaron Westgate. <laughs> yeah. 
Aaron is not only the founder of Pachacacha Bellingham, he is one of our creative thinkers, building designers, community makers. He was born and raised right here in Bellingham with love for this community that runs deep. It has been so awesome to collaborate with Aaron, I can't even tell you. He has put in an incredible amount of energy into this. He worked very late last night and early again this morning to make this all possible, so please welcome Aaron Westgate. <laughs> Thank you, Rose. <clears throat> Thank you guys so much for showing up. This is really awesome. What a beautiful room full of people. My name is Aaron Westgate. I grew up here in Bellingham. I moved away for about 10 years, and I lived a lot in a lot of really awesome places across the country, from Hawaii to Vermont to Colorado, California. But I always knew that I was going to come back to Bellingham because I'm a lifelong fan. I'm committed, and I can't think of anywhere else I'd rather be than this place. So here's to putting roots in and, and believing in this place and seeing what we can turn it into collectively. <laughs> I started Bellingham's Pachacacha Night with a, a small team of collaborators about four years ago with the hopes of getting creative people together to talk about their projects and share their ideas. I'd seen these kind of presentations in other cities before, and for whatever reason, this formula of 20 slides and 20 seconds each, it just seems to work. People are engaged because there's no time to get bored. For a little context, Pachakacha Night was founded in 2003 by an architecture firm in Tokyo, Japan, as a forum for designers to present their ideas in a fresh and stimulating environment. They came up with the idea of limiting the presentations to 20 slides and 20 seconds, and it stuck. There's 700 cities around the world now that host these events regularly. Bellingham was the 450th, I believe. So before we go any further, there's one order of business that needs to be addressed, and it's the pronunciation of this weird word. So let's work on this together. There's people say it all sorts of different ways. I think the, you know, the Midwesterners say pechicucci. I think probably the majority of people say pechicucci. Uh, but the proper Japanese pronunci pronunciation, as far as I understand, I might actually be wrong about this, but I believe that it's pronounced pachakacha, which sounds, if you say it a few times, it sounds like a train rolling. Pachakacha, pachakacha, pachakacha. Let's say all, it's everyone together now. Pachakacha, pachakacha. Yeah, exactly. It's a Japanese word for chit chat. It's about the informality of this type of event, and that we're just hanging out and drinking some beers and talking about fun, inspiring ideas. <clears throat> One other historical note on that matter is that since the beginning, the organizers that started Pachakacha back in Tokyo have been kind of adamant about the fact that this is supposed to be a really fun event. This is, a, this is, a, this is not your boring night of listening to people wax on and about how brilliant they are or whatever. It's about listening to fun, creative ideas in a party-like environment instead of a lecture hall. Yeah! <laughs> and to that end, these organizers back in Tokyo have been kind of, kind of shockingly and consistently clear that beer is a critical part of these events. <laughs> so I'd, I'd like to extend a huge thank you to all the breweries who donated beer and all sales from the beer are going to fund, these, fund the projects. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Beer's a cheap win. You know, you say beer in an audience, it claps. So. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> um, and just to repeat that, all sales and donations and everything that's coming in that your guys' hard-earned money is coming in to spend this Wednesday night with us, it's all going to implementation to make these projects take, take hold. And the fact that we're actually going to see stuff happen from this. So stick around afterwards, and if you're of age and inclined, grab a beer, and let's, uh, let's talk about these ideas afterwards. Uh, out of curiosity, how many people have been to Pachakacha before? Yeah. Oh, wow. How many people have not been to Pachakacha before? Wow. That's more impressive. How many people came to last year's Bellingham 2.0 event? Wow. I wish 
There should be more of you. <laughs> so we're really excited to switch things up a little bit. Traditionally, Pachakacha, practiced around the world, is about typically it's, a, it's an architect and they'll come up and they'll talk about some cool project they built out. And it's very retrospective. It's people showing work that they've done and that they're proud of. And it's cool because of that, because it's, a, it's an opportunity to put it on the public stage and people get to engage and see work that would otherwise go kind of hidden. And that's great, but I, I'm super excited about starting to see our format and, and programming of this start to take shape in a slightly different way, which is to be forward-looking and make this about ideas and about implementation. So last year's event was themed Bellingham 2.0, and we called on 10 presenters to come together and talk about their future visions of this awesome town that we live in. And it was, it was super inspiring. It was across the board from... If we live here, how are we going to die here? If we live here, how are we going to live with honor in the future and think about the deep roots? It was, I mean, it was amazing. People cried. There were standing ovations. It was a, it was a really amazing night. And at the end of the night, we had a, we had a call to arms, essentially, to, to say, let's transform this energy of this event and this community into some forward-thinking, implementable ideas. And so that was kind of the seeds of what, what's happening tonight and what the last few months of planning around Kapow have been. So we've partnered with Sustainable Connections and this extensive list of sponsors to put together the biggest Pachacacha night yet. This has been the goal from day one, is to find ourselves on the main stage of the Mount Baker Theater, and I'm super pumped to be here. This is awesome. So once again, it wouldn't be anything without you guys out here, so thank you for showing up. And Rose has some words. So last year at Pachacacha, uh, nobody cried when I gave my presentation. Uh, but I did give one on placemaking. So if you were there, you might recall my call to action was to just do it. It was more colorful than that, but um, it was something like that anyway. Um, the, the call was to participate, to build, to motivate, to invest, to be part of what we are creating, this sense of place. Um, it was all about helping Bellingham retain its unique and creative culture as we continue to grow and change. And that's why we launched Kapow. <laughs> a placemaking competition to inspire our community to turn spaces into lively places. <clears throat> the Kapow seed was planted with the city's downtown plan with the placemaking workshops and the pilot projects. And a lot of people saying, you know what the city should do? <laughs> OK, so let's be real. Real creative, unique ideas are not going to come from city government. They are going to come from us. They come from you. They come from me. And we make this place. We don't wait for it to happen anymore. We just do it. <laughs> <laughs> The projects being presented tonight are going to get you super excited. These projects are going to draw you to our downtown. They're going to activate our streets. They're going to spark economic activity and help support Bellingham and our badass downtown. Yeah. Kapow is a catalyst for smart growth making our core more attractive and desirable. And the people on stage tonight are smart growth, placemaking, superheroes. And I love them. <laughs> Out of this competition, we have created a portfolio of ideas, both big and small, um, born from our own people right here in Bellingham that know and love our place. With over 45 applications, um, not every idea could make it to the big stage, uh, but each one was worthy and was amazing. Um, and a jury narrowed it down to the 10 ideas, and these finalists have put in an incredible amount of work uh, to be here, and for that I am eternally grateful. After tonight, it will no longer be about big ideas, it's going to be all about that action. Every dollar you donate tonight goes directly to help these projects get off the ground, and the money will be prioritized to the winning projects. 
With our forces combined, we will see some of these projects completed by fall of 2015. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of clapping. <laughs> there are three awards given tonight. The Mayor's Choice, chosen by none other than our very own Kelly Linville. Thank you, Kelly. The Superhero Award was juried by event partners. And finally, and probably the most exciting, the People's Choice Award. Thank you once again for coming and supporting this, what I think is amazing event, if I don't say so myself. Um, and with that, let's get started. I can't get over how big this screen is. <laughs> We're in for a great evening tonight, you guys. We've got 10, presenter, 10 presenters gathered with us to share creative ideas within this context of 20 slides times 20 seconds. They, these people represent a wide cross-section of our community, men and women, some in their teens, some in their 70s, artists, students, professors, community organizers. They all have a few things in common, though, including a profound love of our community here in Bellingham and a desire to breathe more life and creativity into this place that we call home. The last thing that I want to say, beyond the intellectual stimulation and the gathering of Bellingham's finest people and the great beer, my favorite part of Pachacacha is the fact that it offers every presenter the opportunity to be a rock star, to be a superhero for these six minutes and 40 seconds. And it's a big deal and it's very nerve wracking. I've done these presentations before and it's hard to condense your thinking down at this. So let's preemptively give a big round of applause to the 10 people who are gonna present. Yeah. We all pack into venues to watch music and watch sports to be entertained and inspired but you don't have to play an instrument to captivate an audience. Everybody has a story and a vision, and Pachacacha is dedicated to bringing the community together to share and to laugh and to cheer. So without further ado, let's have some fun. Woo! Tonight's first presentation is entitled Alley Oop. Presenting on behalf of the Downtown Bellingham Partnership is Lucy Mantha. She is a 15-year-old freshman at Bellingham High School who is very involved in sports and leadership she has big goals for the future and wants to kickstart those by making downtown Bellingham an even better place to live, work, and play. Lucy Mantha. Hello, everyone. I'm Lucy Mantha, but tonight I'm a superhero. I'm here to introduce to you an awesome idea, one that combines activity, art, and vitality into the least likely yet most impactful places. First, let me give some background information. I was born in Los Angeles, right off of Hollywood Boulevard, and I, we moved to Bellingham when I was four. We visit California quite often. It's, um, recently we visited my aunt in Compton. It was very desolate, empty, and it felt very unused. It was not my favorite experience. In the same week, we visited some more of the more active areas with lots of local events and activities. There's always something to see or do, like street fairs, food trucks, and public art. Anyway, this is a picture of kind of an empty space. It's not very, there's no one out, there's no entertainment or anything, so. Yeah, and then um, the next slide, this is the Getty Museum. It's in Los Angeles, California, and it is huge. <laughs> it is an amazing place to go, and I really liked it a lot. There's a lot of activity, if you go down on this tram, there's like a bunch of food trucks just lining the streets. It's pretty great. <laughs> Love food. Anyway, when I was in sixth grade, I ran for class representative. This was huge because I was really shy and quiet. Um, I ended up winning, but what set my speech apart was the student involvement and fun incorporated into my speech. For example, I did the Wacom Stomp. The Wacom Stomp goes a little something like this, so if you know it or know someone who goes to Wacom, please feel free to join in. Okay. Give me one. Give me two. Give me three. Okay, well, I kind of shortened it because we didn't have a ton of time. Anyway, I credit this idea to City Councilwoman Kathy Lemon who helped add the fun, and that's what won it for me. This is what I want to do for you. I want to bring fun to downtown Bellingham tonight. Fun. Getting the theme here? Anyway, that's me and my brother with K. 
city councilwoman, Kathy Lehman. Um, this was in sixth grade, so this was kind of a while back. Uh, I should also mention that I'm a pretty avid athlete. I play competitive varsity lacrosse and soccer, and every successful team has team bonding. Usually I like a lake or a park or a school even, but wouldn't it be great if downtown could become a fun destination for an active group of people? I think that would be awesome. Anyway, I'm downtown a lot because my mom owns 250 Flora, a local business and catering company. She's not very comfortable with me coming downtown alone or even in small groups for safety purposes, and neither do my friends. It's easy to reach out if you're ever in trouble in bigger cities because you're never alone. Not to mention, since there are so many people in general in bigger cities, all the positivity drowns out the negative behavior. We can get Bellingham to this point if we bring in more positive people, and this is the idea, I believe, is the next step to getting there. I love downtown. The art downtown is so unique. It makes our town stand out, I believe. Here is some of the local street art, or I don't, I don't think that top one's local, but anyway, here's some examples of street art. Um, we got the cool guy with the one eye, you know, casual. Um, and yeah, so just pretty unique art here in Bellingham. It's pretty cool. And my family, friends, and I also love going to events like the Bike In, Farmer's Market, Downtown Sounds, and the Makeshift Block Party. These events are great because they're all age inclusive, so that's awesome. They pull in more families to downtown and bring in just a lot more positive energy. So yeah, that's really awesome. Anyway, like I said earlier, I love sports. In my opinion, more activities equals more youth coming in to downtown with less fear with their independence. So I believe that this idea will bring more youth as well as families. I want to see more. Okay. <laughs> if only somehow we could find a way to embrace the urban elements of downtown, especially the underutilized areas. Alleys generally used for deliveries, garbage, pickup, and worse. So you can see here. Nice example right there. The idea I'm bringing you tonight is to attract more people to downtown, is to create a safe place in the alleys that combine three of the things I love, sports, art, and downtown. I present to you, Alley Oop. <laughs> Along with the clever name, Alley Oop is a collaboration between downtown partnership, downtown business owners, Makeshift, Puget Sound Energy, and the city of Bellingham. Our goal is to make our alleys safe. Here's a couple slides that are just some examples of how the backboards will look. Okay, anyway, we'll take five basketball backboards and have them painted by local artists. <laughs> we will hang them in our alleys to represent a vibrant city life. They will be lit with LEDs to promote safety and bring light to the alleys. Basketball keys will be painted on the alleys um, to show permanent addition to an unlikely place. Anyway. If you recognize this scene from anywhere, yeah. Okay. Honestly, I have no clue how to play basketball. I cannot shoot to save my life. Like, no joke. It's bad. It doesn't matter, though, because it's just a great opportunity to have fun. It isn't just one weekend out of the year, either. People can create, or people can check out a ball from their local favorite business year-round and just at their lunch break go play or whatever. It's great. It will create a more healthy activities in the downtown Bellingham. Best of all, my friends and I, family and I can say, we help create a safer downtown and have fun at the same time. This is a really great picture. This was in Oakland somewhere. And yeah, that's my brother, my dad. Just throw that out there. Anyway, my name is Luciana Mantha, and a vote for Alley Oop is a vote for a safer, more vibrant downtown. Slam dunk, Lucy. 
Our next presentation that we're going to bring you tonight is the Big Chair Project. Mike McCauley is the Big Chair Mastermind. Mike has a long history of public service. He is currently an elected port commissioner at the Port of Bellingham and works with Chuckanut Builders as a superintendent. Yeah, we love them. He has a fascination with improving urban experiences and life so we can protect our rural lands. Please welcome Mike McCauley. Sneaking in from off stage. Space bar or the no. not bad. But I'm not ready I just stopped that. I'm not, re I'm not go, ready to go. go, go. I'm so not ready to go. Hey, tonight's theme is big. This is Big Smo, big SMO. <clears throat> if you know Hillbilly Rap, you know Big Smo. If you don't know Hillbilly Rap, check him out. So <clears throat> Pichakucha. I think we heard how to pronounce it earlier. It's not Pechakucha. If you say Pechakucha, it's okay. We get it. We know you're into it, and that's great. I want to say thank you to the City of Bellingham and Sustainable Connections for hosting this, because without them, this wouldn't happen. So awesome. Thank you. So this is, uh, all these slides are somewhat relevant to what I'm talking about tonight, but every one of them is big, because tonight it's a big deal. Let me take you back to the 1960s. In the 1960s, a woman named Jane Jacobs was complaining about the life and death of our great American cities, and she was wondering what happened, because in the 1800s, things were happening. Cities were vibrant. Things were, were really getting to a new place, and then something over the next 40 years just fell apart. So by the 1960s, our cities, especially the big ones, were not a great place to be. Not a lot of people really wanted to live there, although they needed to work there. So let's fast forward a bit from there to the 1970s, a man named William White writing his seminal work, The Social Life of Small Urban Spaces. And he's looking at New York City, which at the time was a poster child for the problems of our small urban spaces, especially our plazas, street corners, things like that. What was wrong with them? So he set up a wind-up video camera and a wind-up clock, and he started videotaping those or filming those spaces and trying to find out what it was that was the problem. The problem that we know today is they did not know placemaking. And that's what we're here to do tonight. Of nine of us tonight, one of them's going to come away a big fat winner. Hope it's a big chair, but we're placemaking. Placemaking is a relatively new concept. So if we look at what they didn't know what to do in the 1970s, what we know today is called placemaking, they were asking themselves, what do we do? If New York's a poster child, the developers were getting extra height on their skyscrapers. In exchange to the public, they gave them plazas, which were either intentionally or just unintentionally designed badly, and nobody was using them. So what happened? They brought out some chairs. That was it. I've been standing on this stage with whatever's behind me. I have no idea. That's a big-ass glass, by the way. <coughs> and that's, that's Big Mamas. <coughs> it's also my wife. <laughs> so... They said, what if we put some chairs out in these plazas, <clears throat> right? So Harvard, chair people, <clears throat> Harvard recently, 2014, was asking themselves the same question. They had a big grassy area. Over a century, nobody was using it because it rains, it snows, the grass is wet. In summertime, hardly anybody is there to use this big grassy area with all these cool trees. So they went to the nice people at the Project for Public Spaces, and they asked Fred Kent, what do we do? And Fred said, well, why don't we put out some chairs? So they did. They put out some very low cost steel chairs, a few small steel tables. And they didn't tie them down so that they were locked into whatever some kind of designer thought was the right thing to do. So you were locked into that designer's idea of how to use that plaza. And guess what happened? People started sitting down. People started interacting in a plaza that for over a century had never been used like this before. And then a food truck showed up. And then what happened? Well, the people at Harvard said, hey, we can make this better. Let's invite more food trucks. Let's invite performers. Let's invite people to come here because guess what? People like to people watch. So <clears throat> here we've got people enjoying our chairs, which before was just a big empty stage with this talking head talking about history. All right? <clears throat> so these people are enjoying their chairs. They're all at elbow level. It's interesting. They're watching you, by the way, even though you think you're watching them. But what if we did something different? What if we literally and figuratively, big chair people, big chair people, let's do it. <clears throat> what if we elevated that activity six feet up in the air? What if we took your butt and put it up above the cars? 
What if we took your activity of sitting in a chair, enjoying your day, eating your sandwich, so that when someone's driving by or cycling by that downtown street corner or that deli where the big chair is sitting in front of, and they see this big chair, and they see you in this big chair, <coughs> enjoying your lunch eight feet in the air. <coughs> The big chair puts you in a place where nobody has ever been before. Nobody has ever been six feet up downtown sitting in a chair enjoying their lunch because everybody sits in small chairs down low. <laughs> this is what you see in a big chair. <laughs> big chairs are very cost effective. This chair costs about $200. It's made with simple two by fours and bolts. It's very, very safe. You can't break it. I think I can put about 20 people on it if I wanted to. It scales up. This chair will be out 365 days in a year and hopefully in some places you would never expect to see one. But guess what? When it's there, you're doing something that you couldn't do before. You can sit down, but you can do it in a completely different way than you ever have. It's a comfortable thing. It looks like a big deck chair. It's not an unfamiliar object anywhere that you've ever been. You might have seen a lifeguard chair similar to this, or you might just have an Adirondack chair in your backyard. But you know what this is and you know how to use it and it's fun. And when people see you using it, they're going to associate what you're doing with this big chair having fun. This chair on the screen was down at Cornwall Beach. Uh, that was a total whim. It was there for about eight months before the, the logs behind it finally broke it in a storm. But I hope I get your vote tonight, everybody. The big chair is simple, it's scalable, it's affordable, and I hope that at some point we'll see big chairs all over our city. I'd like to say thank you to the giraffe. <coughs> <laughs> Sustainable Connections, City of Bellingham, Chuck and Up Builders for helping pay for this chair, Bellingham Millworks for providing the material for this chair. Of course, this is Sheila, my wife, good friend Jessica, Todd Ellsworth, his daughter Violet. So I hope you get your vote for the big chair tonight, folks. <clears throat> That's great. I love one thing I love about the process of putting these these events together is that inevitably it's 1 a.m. last night this morning and I'm putting the slides together and I'm looking through a sequence of images like that and I have no idea what <laughs> people are going to be talking about. How do you how do you conceptually link a giant giraffe with a big mama? I don't know, but that worked. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> Our next up. Shadow Geometry with Heather Jones. Heather Don Sparks, AKA Noodles, is a professional set designer and sculptor specializing in large scale immersive works of art that involve community interaction. As artistic lead of the Lookout Arts Quarry, she is looking forward to fusing the arts community of Bellingham and Lookout to bring the stunning format of shadow theater to the streets. Heather. Hello, everyone. My name is Heather Don Jones, otherwise known as Captain Caterpillar. I'm here to bring bright lights of shadow theater to the streets of Bellingham. Pew, 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 pew. I'm proposing to build a series of large scale, site specific sculptures that act as theaters for interactive, handmade, shadow projection art. I create magical shadow environments for 4,000 kids annually for the Vancouver International Children's Festival. Costumes transform kids into romping, chomping dinosaurs. Silhouettes, well, cut paper and layers of recycled plastic create moving landscapes with falling rain, large and life cacti, and shooting stars. My year-end profession is in set design and building interactive sculptures for festivals. This particular piece is a 75-foot dragon built with the help of hundreds of kids. I supplied bins of ribbons made from recycled film industry fabric, and kids wove the dragon and tangled each other up in as many ways as they could figure out how to do. Although this might look like the rites of passage symbology chart, this is actually my conceptual proposal. I am proposing to build three sculptures out of plasma cut metal to create theatrical dioramas. They will be covered in recycled boat sails, cut to size, that act as projection surfaces. 
In case you didn't understand my conceptual drawing, this is an example of what the shadow theaters will actually look like. Whimsical works of art that lend their surfaces to projection art and interactive play. This image depicts part of an 80-foot metal sculpture I built using plasma cut technique. A similar implementation of bold design will be used to create the whimsical features of the shadow theaters. The intricately cut metal will allow the sculptures to stand alone as daytime works of art. The sun will shine through these designs and cast pattern shadows on their surroundings. By night, these sculptures will be lit up with projections depicting landscapes and characters designed to engage the silhouettes of people in fun and humorous ways. Various interactive shadow making devices will be set up for people to spin, pedal, and illuminate to activate moving shadow puppets. The method of lighting the sculptures is through a series of overhead projectors set up with dioramas made from recycled colored plastics, cardboard, and various other found objects. It appears, it appears exquisitely intricate, yet it is approachably simple. Shadow Geo will be set up for one month along the South Bay Trail behind Hub Community Bikes. This alleyway offers numerous dark nooks and quirky old buildings, perfect for shadow theater. The theme of the shadow art will hence be bike related with spinning bike part puppets, multi-dimensional sets that allow bike lights to illuminate artistic shadows. This project is designed to instigate further collaboration and interconnection between Bellingham uh, and the thriving circus metropolis of Alger Washington Lucca Arts Quarry. Shadow Jam involves shadow art performances, interactive storytelling, live music, shadow costumes, and special effects. The purpose of Shadow Jams is to engage the public and set a precedent for interaction. These are some of the members of our lovely circus troupe, which includes a snazzy man with a wax mustache, a walking, talking puppet animator, and real life superheroes. The superheroes are, is actually the project engineer, for real. Triple the impact. This proje project will not get thrown out or stored in a dusty corner after its stint in Bellingham streets. It will continue to serve community arts initiatives, including a special showing of shadowy comic art at the Alternative, Alternative Library, Circus Shadow Performance at Lookout Arts annual fundraiser Shebang and lend itself to various other Bellingham events. This project is dedicated to sustainable design through the use of 90% recycled materials. It instigates collaboration and community input from the very beginning of its team-led creation, engages the public through approachably playful interactive sets, and is dedicated to creating safe community place in the darkest of corners. Magic happens in the realm of shadow, and shadows are everywhere. One discovers new superpowers, power animals, and your shadow can shoot colored rays of light. Trash talks, paper can fly, your hand has all fives. Everyday object, it's a spectacular everyday. I'd now like to present you with a snippet of shadow puppet art for your viewing pleasure. It's a beautiful day in Bellingham. Oh, hello, sir. Oh, hello, ma'am. Oh, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? Do you think it'll rain? Oh, no, it's raining. Oh, no, it's raining. I'm a big, grumpy clown of boring. What are we going to do? Call an artist superheroes. They'll bring their magical unicorn shadow puppets. Yay! Go 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 go! Not if I have anything to say about it. Boom boom boom! Ooh, you're all wet. Blah. Now let's get this guy. We're gonna be creative and solve this problem. Ooh, power up! Ooh, Amazing! Wow! Artist transformation! Awesome!
shadow geo to bring bright magical rays of light to a dark corner near you. Didn't see that one coming, did ya? <laughs> Up next is Soapbox Corner. And I have the pleasure of working with one of my own professors from when I was in college, Nick Zafaredos. <laughs> Nick Zafaredos is a professor of urban planning at Western Washington University. He has served uh, several decades in civil service appointments, including a membership on the Bellingham Planning Commission and Board of Adjustments. I don't know what that is, but it sounds really important. He is a longtime advocate of civil society and the rebirthing of Bellingham's downtown. Please welcome Nick. Well, hey, good people of Bellingham. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to hit the, the go. So, we've heard it said that big ideas sometimes come in small packages. Mother Teresa said, be faithful in small things because it is in them that your strength lies. I like to think in formulas. <laughs> Here's one for creating social capital. Where one unit of public space plus 50 units of social interactions, preferably human, creates not just social capital, but social capital to the ninth power, or giga social capital. Just what we need on every downtown corner. This is a commentary on human evolution, as perceived by Mark Zuckerberg. I drew it, I drew it in the facial expressions myself. <laughs> anyway, the new social media has come, and we learn to adapt to new forms of expression, like text messaging and expressing our likes and dislikes with symbols, new forms of communications that the NSA can keep times on. <laughs> and with these new forms of social expression, we begin the decline in social engagement, the decline of the public sphere. This chart shows the steady decline since a peak in the 1960s, not entirely due to the rise in technology, but that certainly is a factor. And then there's a the question of our transformation from a politically active society to one that may be a bit less engaged. And what do those billions in campaign contributions really bring us? Meet Mr. Robo, the computer guy behind those hideous phone calls. Social engagement is different than back in the days of It's a Wonderful Life when George Bailey's savings and loan was about, all about supporting the community. And as it saved the community, the, savings, uh, the community saved the savings and loans right back. Our tradition of social engagement has its roots in political activism and in public oratory, when ideas were shared using direct dialogue. And that public oratory, some said, led to a more enlightened society it created people's movements, which led, to, which led to policy reforms. And that helped our society progress. And much of that societal enlightenment got its start on a very, very simple foundation, the soapbox. So, that's my big idea, in a very simple, small package, to bring back the soapbox into our public sphere. <laughs> and to encourage all of us to step up and share our stories. For a location, I suggest the wonderfully located but underutilized public space at the southeast corner of Railroad and Chestnut. It's on the way to the farmer's market. We all pass it. But there's little reason to stop and pause um, on this corner at this time. 
The soapbox would be dedicated to one of the great orators that came before us. One such great woman of history, or her story, is Katherine Montgomery, a founding educator at Western's Normal School, a suffragette leader, an early Northwest environmental advocate, and the founding mother of the Pacific Trail. Here's how I imagine a Saturday, night, a Saturday afternoon gathering might look. A gathering to hear someone's political thoughts, to hear someone's inspirational ideas, to hear someone's impromptu artistic gifts. And with this comes an appeal to our political leaders. Imagine a city council race or a mayoral race coming up where there were no campaign funds, just voices stepping up. <laughs> stepping up to the box to express their visions of a better Bellingham. A rendering of what the sofa box might look like, inscribed with a dedication to Catherine, inscribed with prompts to step up to the box and share your voice. A few more perspective views to help imagine a sidewalk prompt that can use to sit on, to stand on, to gather a crowd, to read your poetry, to strum a song, to express an idea. It's a simple yet durable soapbox of cast concrete, which is a sustainable material and locally produced, weighing enough to keep it put, but not enough that it can't be put on another corner. At a cost of about one grand, mostly for materials and some student stipends to build and install the piece, and finished in an acid stain to match a wooden box, and to contrast it with the surrounding gray concrete landscape. And it can be built in less than a month, after all. It's just a little idea, a simple little box for expanding, expanding social capital in our downtown. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, we have Synchrotricity. Up next is Casey Scalf. Casey was raised in the foothills of Mount Rainier, came to Bellingham for college, and now operates his business, Sensibellum, which specializes in interactive art and projection mapping. Many fields interest him, but they all center around the creative mixing of the senses through technology for the exploration of the arts and education. Casey. How's it going, everyone? Can you hear me all right? Okay. Like I said, my name is Casey Scalf, and I've been in Bellingham for a little bit. And very excited to present here. So here's my idea, Synchro Tree City. Some fundamental joys come from interacting with the world around us, especially so when we can touch and interact with objects outside of our physical range, such as when we can switch on a light with a switch, or we can skip a rock across the river, or play frisbee and catch. And this is the foundation for this idea. Now, these simple actions multiply when the switch can turn on many lights at once. Now, we can see the root of this action, but what emerges from it is new and often complex. And this is where it gets really interesting. <clears throat> this is the visualization of the evolution of complex systems. An idea or a spark can start, and then it spreads. Pretty soon, we have local groups that start to emerge, and pretty soon, the whole network comes together as one. We can see this in the way we get food, for instance. What used to come from one store, we can now get at many stores, and now pretty soon, Everyone's growing food in their backyard. And this, here we are. And of course, nature was there first. Imagine yourself walking through a field at night with fireflies. And as your feet disturb the plants next to you, a few may jump out, which then spark others. And pretty soon, a ripple of light is cascading across the field in a visual symphony. 
On a recent trip to Boulder, Colorado, I was struck by the immensity and scale of the lights in the downtown during winter. They were impressive, but they were static and unresponsive. And they also necessitated an electrical outlet at the bottom of each tree leading back to a central point. And hence the idea at hand, Synchro Tree City, is a collection of light fixtures hanging from trees, powered by the sun, and that light up, responding to different cues in the environment and people walking underneath them. This proposed idea is here at the intersection of Chestnut and Railroad. The parts are quite simple, actually. We have a ring of LEDs that's driven by a microcontroller, powered by a battery that's fueled by a solar cell. We have a little light sensor that tells it when it's dark out and when it's time to turn on. Wireless communication keeps them all in sync, and these are all actually made in Brooklyn. Here's a little video that, insulates, that in, illustrates how you can see them at night. We provide a couple of them in a cluster, and the behaviors start to get more complex. When you walk by, a few turn on. When you run by, the whole tree shimmers. When you and your friends get around a few different trees, many different things can happen. So we have, an, we have a playful system, one that is sustainable, and one that is also a little different every time. It also makes use of existing structures, i.e. the trees. And another point is that it is scalable and also cost effective. And it also introduces technology in new and fresh ways. So why would you want to play with this art? Well, because art is fun. It's meant to create a dialogue that fosters interactions and thoughts. And when you walk underneath a tree and it lights up because you and your friends walk underneath it, that's stimulating no matter how old you are. And why would you want to support this? Because mixing art and technology helps bridge the gap between our most useful tools and some of our most classic pastimes, enjoying and interacting with the world around us. And by helping support this, we'll have another element along these lines in Bellingham. Now, why would you want to learn about this? This makes technology and art approachable. Computers can be used for so much more than accounting software and solitaire. They can be used to soak up the sun and turn on lights when you walk underneath them. And interacting with them is one step closer to understanding it. And of course, when we step down out of the cloud and onto the ground, we see that the trees are a big part of this. Now, the tree's health and well-being is important to the success of this project. So placing them in the right trees, on the right branches, and with materials that are flexible and also non-abrasive is going to ensure this can last for many moons. Now, someone may want to take one of these home. They may want to, instead of purchasing one, get up there and grab an original for their gallery. Part of this is making sure they are high enough up above the ground in the right kind of branches and secured with cords and enclosures that are tough and prohibit any tampering. Now, you may be asking yourself, what about maintenance? Luckily, the design and mechanics are very simple. There is no moving parts, the LEDs and circuits use very little energy, and the solar cells and batteries last for tens of thousands of cycles. What's more is that they're waterproof, and the software can be altered wirelessly, so you never have to go up and play with them. Now, of course, the reality of this is that the idea takes energy and resources. Luckily, it's not my first electronics project. The first step is to make a couple of them, make about four of them, and play around what design works the best, what code runs the smoothest. Once we have a robust model, it's time to scale it up. Let's put it in many trees. Now, making by these by hand is not just fun, it's necessary. We can't go to the store and get these off the shelf. We can't go online and double click and just make these and assume they'll be here in a few days. We have to use design and programming and engineering to make them. And what better application for these skills than to beautify the city? Now, sometimes you'll need to roll up your sleeves and figure out what works and what doesn't and what's the best approach. And part of this is having a pool of possible ideas and then selecting from that pool a suitable design. This accelerates the process of finding a good model that will last the test of time. It's also fun, and we learn what works. Now, this is a slight timeline. We want to get our feet wet right away and play around with some of the parts. Next, let's roll them out during spring and test them out in the field. By summer, we'll have them dialed in, and by fall, it'll be time to roll them out and have them shine throughout the winter and the next seasons. Like I said, I really enjoy living in Bellingham, and it is somewhere that has the environment we love to explore and the community that keeps us coming back. 
It would be my honor to provide some art that engaged the city and beautified it in a way that I know best. Thank you. Ooh. Wow. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting Casey just a few months ago and had no idea that that kind of genius is right here in our town. So I'm, I'm very excited that uh, he was one of our finalists. Next up is Rain, Rain, Go Away. The next one is presented, uh, not presented, but created by Shirley Erickson. She is a professional artist with over 30 years creating sculptures, paintings, and mixed media work. She is a member of the Bellingham Arts Commission for the last 15 years and teaches creative welding at the Bellingham Technical College. She is currently away, um, and Alex Wiley has bravely agreed to present in her place. Please welcome Alex. Hi, everybody. Um, obviously, I'm not Shirley. She really regrets not being here this evening. This is Shirley, and many of you know her. She's a wonderful artist and a great friend, a huge supporter of art in downtown Bellingham. And she has come up with this wonderful idea of... <laughs> first, uh, first off, most of her work is uh, fused glass and steel. She loves the interaction of transparent and opaque, massive and delicate, reflective and dull, the balance between the sexes, nature and man, the physical and mental experience, effort and effect. Her sculptures are metaphors for life. Events in the world around her are her motivation. She enjoys the challenges of visual communication, <laughs> and she loves movement. So, there it goes. Some of you may recognize her work. Here in Bellingham, Shirley has several permanent pieces up at Big Rock Garden Park, and most recently, The Guardian over at Fairhaven Library, one of the treasures made possible through the Bellingham Group Art Purchase. Thanks for anybody that donated to buy that. She paints, she builds assemblage work from recycled materials. She teaches at Bellingham Technical College. Uh, okay, the, uh, this is the piece that she developed and designed for the Blaine Water Sewer Treatment Plant. She competed with over 30 applicants from all over the country and it was able to create and install it as part of a capital percentage for the arts program. The piece indicates and references the relationship between clean flowing water and the salmon life cycle that is so important to all of us. The idea of the installation of umbrellas came over a year ago on a trip to Croatia. She could just picture how wonderful and appropriate this would be in the Pacific Northwest. This installation will be a celebration of our place on the planet and our rainy weather which feeds our forests and rivers making Bellingham the most beautiful place on earth. So she's been gathering umbrellas over the past year. This is, the umbrellas are all recycled and are reused, found and donated to the project by Belling Hamsters. They're brightly colorful in varying sizes, bouncing around like wildflowers in the wind. After a while of planning and plotting and thinking, the stars aligned and Kapow presented itself. Shirley knew exactly that she wanted to install Rain, Rain, Go Away in downtown Bellingham. She started researching, found many types of umbrella installations all over the world, worked to adapt her project for the unique climate and weather downtown. Now, umbrellas are iconic everywhere and pleasing to all ages. We use them for shelter from the rain, yet we make them colorful and fun. While, <laughs> while we are safely more visible in the dreary, drippy weather under a bright umbrella, the umbrellas will be, for the project, reinforced, weather treated, and wired open so that they will hang from a center point and swing in the wind. Many of you have umbrellas at home that have blown inside out and Shirley is happy to take them from you. The idea of adding whimsy and creating colorful space using umbrellas as an artistic medium was beginning to solidify. The next challenge was where. Many fun sites were considered, but overhead utility lines are, difficult, are a difficult obstacle with a metal umbrella. In the alleyways, street trees provided a similar consideration. So, the courtyard of the parkade seemed the perfect setting. 
You could use some bold color, something inspired to make it a more desirable place to gather. There's currently quite immobile art. It's beautiful, but it doesn't move. It's stone and steel, brick and cement, lend themselves to become a perfect background for a brightly colored kinetic suspended umbrella sculpture. The courtyard will have small cables stretch across the space at different levels so that it, will, it too will be transformed by the colorful umbrellas floating and spinning in midair. Ta-da! We could all use a bit of, of <laughs> color in our lives. It lifts our spirits and brings us joy. Color contrasts the gray sky and brings our eyes upwards from the pavement. And we're just going to enjoy this for a sec because it's so cool. <laughs> Now, umbrellas would also go on the corner of the parkade on Holly Street, cascading from the top of the roof to the first floor. There's kind of a cutout in the structure. It's not in th and they would just bring light and beauty to this gray and rather um, uh, rigid space, looking like this. It would bring a lot of attention during the summer months to the to the building as we come down Holly Street before you turn into the parkade. It will be a bright, eye-catching thing behind the street trees with a lot of movement and hopefully enliven the space. The piece would not be intended to be a permanent installation, but the wonderful thing about umbrellas is they collapse kind of flat and they don't weigh very much. So this piece could grow and expand and be installed as a pop-open sort of installation anywhere in Bellingham. It could grow and move over time and just reappear anywhere. And hopefully, you all will think it was fun, contribute your umbrellas, and vote for Shirley's Rain Rain Go Away. Thank you guys so much. I love the participation. There's so many people involved. It's awesome. Our next presentation is titled Art in the Alley. Yeah. Pacific Coast born and raised, Shannon McLaughlin is excited about giving you, the people of Bellingham, Washington, a place to express creativity and ideas. She's ready to put those fancy college degrees and collective knowledge into action. Shannon McLaughlin. I wish I could say you're all looking really beautiful tonight, but I can't see you, so I'm sure you are. So honestly, I wish that we could spend my presentation watching Patti Smith live in Stockholm in 1976, or watch Charlie Chaplin's speech from The Great Dictator, or read out loud to you the best book about what life's all about, The Little Prince. But that would take way more than 20 slides and 6.7 minutes. Instead, I'll sum up what they all say. People, you have the power. Also, we need to stop thinking inside the hat. So who the hell am I? It doesn't really matter. What matters is that I'm human, just like you. And I think that you're all here because on some level, you care about the community. And I'm here. And I'm here because I want to see the projects being presented tonight flourish. We want to see artists and tradespeople get paid for their genius and their hard work. And I want students to feel like there's actually a way to make some change right now. I want you people of Bellingham to have an opportunity to make a difference. I want the trades in downtown Bellingham and the Alley District to thrive because people want to be in their spaces. So here's a quote from, as my best friend Brie calls her, the priestess of punk rock, Patti Smith. In art and dream, may you proceed with abandon. In life, may you proceed with balance and stealth. So let's talk about the first part of that, dreaming with abandon. The priestess of punk rock also says in her 1976 interview, if you're willing to take any type of leap into the void, you'll experience something you've never experienced before. Sounds like an adventure to me. The world is our oyster. 
I can't tell you how tired I am of being told it's too hard, or it's just not the right time, or there's not enough money. If you actually dream big enough, you can make it happen. The money will come, the support will come, the time will come, and inherently, everything will become easier. Plant those seeds, it's time to make some change. Don't be afraid of gentrification, people. All it means is that you're doing something right. You've cultivated the seeds that grow into the tree of life and you can start it again in another space and again and again until the whole city is alive because of you. The support will come, just grow the vision. So let's focus in on alleys for a minute. Often forgotten about, their periphery nature means they're on the fringe. They're a space of seemingly lesser or secondary importance. But if you walk or bike in Bellingham, you know that the alleys are the arteries of this city. This is our culture. We want people to be aware of alleys and utilize this fringe space. Just down there, there are blacksmiths, photographers, woodworkers, thing finders, restaurateurs, gardeners, businesses having positive back alley conversations with the community, waiting to be discovered and explored. So what does this big picture for the alley district look like? It means bike lanes and lighting, crosswalks, signs, more businesses using paint and plants to liven it up with art and design, events, music, food, people dancing in the streets. This is all possible. So what's our proposal? <laughs> we want to involve the community through sustaining and growing the awesome organic culture of makers in the alley district. How? Two events supporting and celebrating our local artisans. The result, a better space to live, work, bike, and play for all of us. In art and dream, may you proceed with abandon. In life, may you proceed with balance and stealth. Balance and stealth. It's great to have heart, but we also have to use our heads. Things do take planning and action, and ideas are just ideas until there's action. This project is structured with community involvement in mind. We want you all to be involved. This is a festival of artwork, ideas, and conversations to collaborate and support each other's work. So step one, an open invitation to all local artists. 30 selected artists will get a frame space and a budget to cultivate their project. Step two, once the artists are organized, we hold a weekend-long work party. This can be as simple as artists getting together and jamming out in the sunshine with some paint, or we can go big and have music and food carts inviting the public to check out what's going on in the Alley District. Step three, we throw another party. <laughs> this time, it's a design and trade showcase taking place in the Alley District and promoting local crafts, trade, design, music, food, and more. This is an opportunity for us to revisit some of the projects presented today to spread the vision and the contagion. The idea is to become an ongoing, self-sustainable annual festival of ideas. It's designed to continue tonight's energy. It's the reason Kapow was created. And we're not just creating one space, we're creating multiple spaces, getting the most bang for our buck. Most importantly, we need your support. Sustainable Connections and the City of Bellingham can help fund us, but really, a vote for us is a vote for you. If we have your support, the Alley District can continue to be the voice of the people on the fringe who don't feel like they have one. This is our home, this is our life. So are you ready to unsubdue Bellingham? Yeah. Together, we can build our dreams wildly and with abandon, yet still proceed with balance and self. Vote for your voice. You can be heard, you can be seen, and you can make a difference. Let us provide you with that platform. Don't slow yourself down with doubt. Get into the peripheral. Get some vision. Come on, Bellingham. In the spirit of the revolutionaries, all I ask is that your vote, whatever it is, reflects your hopes, not your fears. Dream big and with abandoned Bellingham. Let's get them subdued together. Next up is the
Urban Fern Kingdom. In 2008, Kat and Audra founded the makeshift art space on a prayer and a dream and watched it grow into an award-winning art gallery, all ages music venue, and an artist's studio space. After passing on the reins this year, they're excited to stay involved and volunteer for special events like Kapow! This has been fun. Okay. Hi, I'm Kat. I'm Audra. We're here representing Makeshift. Thank you. <laughs> so when we started thinking about what we'd like to see more of in downtown Bellingham, and what really makes this place special, we immediately thought about our natural environment. Bellingham does not mess around when it comes to getting outside, and that's a huge part of our community's identity. Bellingham also has a long history of environmental advocacy, and we work hard to be good stewards of our natural resources. So we thought, how can we incorporate those values and that amazing feeling of getting outside and connecting with our nature into our downtown, which is a vibrant urban cultural center? Wah, wah. So this is a pretty stark contrast. This is the parkade if you're standing in Commercial Street Plaza, which is the little brick area across from Brandywine. When we started looking for locations that would be ideal to showcase our natural environment in an urban setting, right away, we thought of the parquet. Thank you. It's safe to say that this isn't the most popular building downtown. The parquet has been the brunt of a long-standing downtown parking debate. It's the concrete giant that doesn't quite fit in with its neighbors. But this building actually has some really cool lines, like the helix ramp off to the side, and we saw a huge opportunity to enliven the parkade and the adjacent plaza. As we started putting our proposal together, we discovered that the city already agrees that it's time the parkade got a facelift. In a report last year, they outlined several upgrades they'd like to make to the building, which would include removing those big, outdated concrete panels. So we wanted to keep our project simple enough that it would be realistic to install, but we also wanted to incorporate modern, innovative concepts. So what you're looking at is a very small example of vertical gardening, which is becoming very popular in urban spaces, both indoors and outside, for a number of reasons. Aside from looking really cool aesthetically, vertical gardens, or living walls, have a ton of benefits. They clean the outside air of pollutants, they act as a natural sound dampener, provide a natural water filter, create habitat, and insulate the buildings they're installed on. Living walls also have been proven to increase foot traffic and to create calming spaces that just make people feel good. You know that smile you get when you walk past the Ivy Heart on the side of the greenery building? That's a small scale example of how much a little greenery impacts morale in colorless urban spaces. When we live in an urban environment, we're surrounded by concrete, traffic, noise, and pollution. And that has a profound impact on our physical and mental wellness. Greenery softens this hard environment, which eases stress. And studies have even shown that simply having a view of greenery increases workplace productivity. Also, we're really fast talkers. We're trying really hard to just... Okay, <laughs> how much does this one rule? <laughs> So green walls like this one are also a symbol of the green building movement since they're highly visible and they directly impact the amount of green space in urban centers. Bellingham prides itself on our green building practices and we think that our project would fit right in. Okay, remember this place? Remember how we wanted to bring the heart of what's important to Bellingham downtown? Guess what's smack in the center? The parkade. We're really excited to reclaim this unused space and provide an aesthetic stimulation where you wouldn't expect it. So, <laughs> we hooked up with a local designer, Alexei Ford. He makes these beautiful insulated planners. And it turns out that he was already working on creating some vertical planners as well, because the vertical gardening has become so popular. So these planners are durable, insulated. They use fiberglass panels, galvanized steel trim, and non-corrosive fasteners, so they won't deteriorate over time. 
We're super excited to boost our local economy by partnering, partnering with local businesses to make this project a reality. We want to give innovators like Alex A an opportunity to take their dreams to the next level. This project is the perfect opportunity to showcase a successful vertical garden and encourage others to install them. We also partnered with a local nursery, Plantas Nativa, and with their help, we put together a great list of plants that are native to our region that would do well in a living wall. Some of those include maidenhair fern, deer fern, false Solomon seal, goat's beard, sluice sedge, and sword fern. Pretty awesome names for plants. <laughs> native plants will naturally fare better in our climate, which means less maintenance. The wall we've chosen on the parkade's north-facing wall is meant to get less sun, and that's great for water-loving, shade-tolerant plants. And by using native plants, we also add an educational component. We are proposing signage at the base of the living wall that would identify the plants used and would showcase the importance of native plant restoration in our area. We'd also love to see students taking field trips to the parkade with their science classes. Even though we've chosen water-loving, shade-tolerant plants, we know that our vertical garden will probably experience some unusually dry seasons. So we're talking to the city's rainwater irrigation specialists and looking at a few options for irrigation systems. We're also looking at ways we can incorporate rainwater catchment, which would add another level of sustainability to this project. There are also a lot of exciting possibilities that would make this project even more awesome, like nighttime lighting that would really make the greenery pop, and it would also help make the parkade safer at night. Even if funding isn't available for add-ons like lighting or irrigation, we feel confident that those could come later as funding is available. Take a look at this, huh? <laughs> Much better, right? Look at that. The green and most of our pictures on the projector, which is good. We call this the Urban, Urban Fern, Fern Kingdom. Kingdom. It's a series of vertical gardens that would take the place of the concrete panels of the parkade, which are scheduled to be removed anyway. So this permanent installation, isn't that awesome? It really invigorates the parkade aesthetically. It makes the Commercial Street Plaza a destination location. And the total cost for those bottom four panels right there, that's about a little under $3,000 and roughly $6,000 for everything that you see there. So please vote for the Urban Fern Kingdom. I want to see that happen. I want to see all these happen. I really do. And just a quick shout out while we're on the matter, Plantas Nativa is, is responsible for us having this little jungle on stage here. Big, big thank you to those guys, as well as in the lobby. All native, all local, beautiful stuff. Next up, we have the Parkade Night Market. <clears throat> Dean Fearing, Fearing, an idea guy, is the executive director at the Culshin Community Land Trust. Dean is a Northwest native and has worked in the nonprofit field for nearly 20 years. Dean graduated from Western Washington University's Fairhaven College with a degree in sustainable design and development. After graduation, he worked at the Restore and became their first director, managing Restores in Bellingham and Seattle. In 2008, Dean joined Culshin Community Land Trust and now serves as the executive director and has over seven years experience planning and hosting events of all sizes. Mr. Dean Ferry. Wow, what an evening. This has been great, huh? Can I get a kapow? Kapow! It's exciting to be here. It's amazing what an idea can turn into and grow. And uh, there's certainly been some amazing ideas presented tonight. Um, oh, I gotta hit this start. Thanks. So my name is Dean Fearing. By day, I'm the executive director of Kolsch Community Land Trust. By night, I am bat, middle-aged man. <laughs> I left the smokes at home because my daughter's with me and that wouldn't be good. Uh, before I start, I want to give a big thank you to Eric and Becca Shu at Shoe Design and Rick Mullen at um, Presentation Art Studios. They helped me put together this great presentation tonight and without their help this would really be I'd be embarrassed standing up here trying to create words to some really slides that I found and 
put together. Um, so who loves Bellingham? I love Bellingham. That's why I've made it my home. I've been here for over 20 years, I'm raising my daughters here. Um, my youngest daughter, Scarlett's right there in the audience. Hi, Scarlett. Um, everyone knows that it's a great place to live. We love it here. It's been discovered. It's been featured in many magazines. I'm way behind on my slides already. Um, but you saw some, you know, articles. We always make these top lists. Uh, everyone always seems surprised, but we always make these lists because it's such a great place to live. So we do have a lot to offer, and I want to add to that with the idea that I've created. Uh, it was an idea I've had for a while, and it just, Rose created the opportunity to present it, and so here I am. Um, I work downtown. I love working downtown. I get to walk around. I get to partake in the great restaurants that are downtown. I love things like the farmer's market on the weekend. Downtown Sounds is a lot of fun. The art walks on Friday nights. Or just hanging out with my friends at a patio at a restaurant on a Friday afternoon after work is a lot of fun. I love that we live in a walkable community that fosters fun and exciting activities. And I want to see more activities and opportunities in existing spaces that, add, that will add to the vibrancy of our downtown. One existing space that I walk through a lot, which I think is completely underutilized, is the plaza next to the parkade. Uh, it's a nice space. It has brick pavers, public bathrooms. It's ideal for activity and some kind of life to that area. Um, it's the parkade plaza that I call it. Other people have ideas for this space, which I think is really exciting. Uh, it's located next to some great restaurants and other businesses. Uh, and I think it would lend itself to, to some great nighttime activities. This is where I need a kapow. Can I get a kapow? <laughs> Thank you. So night market, that's my idea for this space. What is a night market? Think of the farmer's market, but at nighttime, basically, is what it is. I've been to night markets up in Vancouver, in Milan, Italy, in Taipei, Taiwan, when I lived there briefly. It's a fun space uh, with nighttime activities, and it brings people downtown. And that's the kind of concept that I want to create for this space here uh, at the Parkade Plaza. So Rick and Eric have done a great job helping me put together this vision for the night market that I'm sharing here tonight. But I want you all to imagine this space full of people. It's a warm summer evening. We've got great activity down there. Um, musicians playing music, food carts selling food, artists selling their wares. Uh, the Commercial Street Night Market creates a venue for a community of all ages to come together and have fun downtown. I'm gonna let these slides catch up because I'm way ahead. So how about another kapow? <laughs> Thank you. There we go. So this is a vision that I've been working on uh, with Eric and Rick to create. And so, again, it's a great space that's completely underutilized in a really good location close to some great businesses downtown. Um, the way I imagine the night work at working is it would be uh, coincide with the first Friday night art walks that Allied Art does. And so it would enhance what they have to offer. The Pickford Film Cinema does the rooftop cinema during the summer on top of the night uh, parkade, it would be a great thing to coincide with that as well. Um, and I've talked to Nick Hartridge at the Downtown Network, and it would be a great thing to mesh with what they're doing down there, and maybe even eventually close off all of Commercial Street to do another event similar to Downtown Sounds with live music and bands playing and food trucks and the whole thing right there on Commercial Street. <laughs> Woo! So there's a lot of possibilities. I mean, there's a lot of possibilities for this. There's a lot of possibilities that we've heard tonight. Uh, as a community, we get a choice of how we want our downtown to look and feel. It's not something that we're entitled to. It's something that we get to choose. There are many great ideas being shared here tonight. Uh, I think they all create a vibrant downtown that we all desire and want to see happen. I love that energy. I love the energy that everyone has brought to this event tonight. I hope that you'll consider making 
this idea one of the top three so that we can make this happen and create another vibrant community event downtown, central to businesses, where everyone can come and have fun, listen to music, meet artists, eat great food, and drink beer. <laughs> so with that, kapow. Commercial Street and A Market. Okay, next up is a very special presentation, and this one is um, outside of even the Kapow box. Uh, the next one is up by Team Hamster, presenting their idea for a signature tourist attraction for Bellingham. This particular project proved to be too expensive for this little competition um, and will not be eligible for a vote. Uh, but we think it's cool, <laughs> really cool, uh, and we still want to share it. Um, it was an idea submitted by Patrick Hurley. He's the former executive director of the Downtown Bellingham Partnership. Maddie Newman. <laughs> Maddie Newman will be presenting on behalf of Team Hamster, which also includes Dan Welch and Adair Orr of Bundle Design Studios, who have created the designs you're about to see, as well as Brad Stone, George Paul, and John Bunn of Iron Street Printing. needs a microphone, especially a super hamster like me, so here we go. I'm a little taller than this, though. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Have you all had a good night tonight? Yeah. All right. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Great. So, uh, we've all seen this sign, right? Not with the little question marks, but uh, this is an exit sign for downtown uh, Bellingham off of I-5. Uh, this project was inspired by a lack of signature tourist attractions in Bellingham. Uh, we want to bring visitors off the freeway. We want to take them away from Meridian. Uh, we want to bring them downtown so they can enjoy. Something along the lines of a Fremont troll. Have you met him? Uh, people drive to Seattle, to the Fremont neighborhood, to take selfies with the troll, hang out with the troll. Um, and literally, it's just under a bridge, and people come and visit it because it's a troll and it's cool. Um, Besides the troll, there are less exciting um, tourist attractions, like uh, here in Cocker City, Kansas, they have what they're deeming as the world's largest ball of twine. Uh, actually, it's just one of what is claiming to be the largest. Apparently, there's a bit of a, um, you know, it's up to interpretation with that. Uh, or, uh, House of Cards fans, yeah, this is real. This is a tourist attraction in uh, Gaffney, Georgia. This is the Gaffney Peach. Um, it's real real boring. I mean, just a peach, okay? Uh, but here we have uh, a selection of some more interesting tourist attractions. We have the world's largest buffalo, the world's largest uh, bottle of ketchup, world's largest peanut, uh, world's largest picnic basket. We even have the world's largest Lower right-hand corner, ladies and gentlemen, world's largest turtle riding a snowmobile. Uh, but they're all static. They don't do anything. Excuse my hamster hands here as I try and turn those. Um, <laughs> this is waiting on the inner urban. This is not a static statue. Um, this is, it goes from great to amazing as the community dresses up the statue um, for holidays and community events and for the seasons. Um, so. Belling hamster, what does that mean? A belling hamster is a name given to us, to you, to me, uh, especially me. Um, and it, we're known for being quirky. We're known for being artsy. Um, and we are creatives and we love everything outdoors. We love movement. So we propose the belling hamster wheel. The world's largest human-powered hamster wheel. Not 
not just something sexy to look at, ladies and gentlemen. This is something for you to engage in, to play in, to interact with. Uh, nothing like this exists in the world because there's only one place where it belongs. Right here. Uh, so, you're asking yourself, hamster hero girl, where in the world are you going to put that thing? Um, so, there are many places downtown that we're thinking about, um, and some factors we're considering are um, obviously parking. Uh, we want to put it in the place where we want to liven up certain parts of downtown, accessibility from I-5. Uh, so here are some options for you. We have, this is the back of the library. Those of you who have ever uh, been to our library might recognize. Here uh, would be a good option. It has a lot of surrounding green space. Um, and it's a place where many families visit. Kids would enjoy uh, taking a, a roll on the, the, the wheel there at the library. Um, this is Unity Circle. You know what? This is Unity Circle. Uh, it's a small patch of green space, very underutilized, right on the corner by Skagit State Bank downtown. Um, it is pretty much the center of downtown, and so it could use a human-powered hamster wheel. Am I wrong? No. Okay. Uh, this area, this is the salmon hatchery. So this is a place where people, uh, you might not have seen it. It is attached to Maritime Heritage Park. Um, this is a place, it's a real gem. There's parking that's attached, which is a real plus. Um, and the wheel could also go in other areas of Maritime Heritage Park, but there's a lot of green space. Families go there. Uh, what about the Light Catcher Museum, ladies and gentlemen? Um, right here we have, um, oh, there I am, right there in the middle. Um, this is a great spot. Bring more people to the museum, and um, this provides an opportunity for uh, people to not only look, but play in the museum as well. A second option would be inside of the light catcher courtyard. So it uh, has the same benefits, bringing people to the museum, allowing kids a more interactive place to play. Uh, but it is secure. So at night, we can close that gate and um, have that. So how does it work, technical minds are asking. Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, since no wheel exists like this anywhere in the world, we've designed it from scratch. Uh, it needs to be uh, structurally sound, functional, and safe. Uh, as well as visually exciting, compelling, and big enough to be attention grabbing. So here's the nitty gritty. Uh, the diameter of the wheel is 20 feet. The wheel as designed is made of fabricated steel plate and structural steel tubing, ooh. The wheel itself is hubless and its rims ride on conventional roller bearings. The bearings are housed in a cradle that encapsulates the moving parts. Are you with me? I know it's a little hard to see. Um, and it supports the structure over concrete pier footing. Um, so here it is at uh, the granary. So this is um, an idea we have uh, for downtown's future. So uh, this is uh, what it could be like one day as the granary is built up. It's an underutilized uh, location that um, is being developed, and we think it would be a great spot. So. If I was a tourist and I was going to Costco, I would turn off of Costco and go to the wheel instead. Um, ladies and gentlemen, are you excited about this? Okay. So, if you're excited, uh, please do. We would love your support. Please join us. Find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash build the hamster wheel. Give us a like. If you would like one of these t-shirts, um, if you follow us in the next five minutes, we're going to give three of you a t-shirt tonight that you can go home with. So uh, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Let's roll on here in the Bellingham hamster wheel. Thank you. Kapow. She is so adorable, I want to bring her home and put her in a cage. <laughs> I think it's the big cow. Yeah, I don't know where my note was. We're going to have a uh, big, giant community kapow. Watch it. <laughs> that felt dramatic. <laughs> so, we're going to do some live voting here. And before we do that, 
just so everything's fresh in your mind, I just want to do a real quick recap of what we've been through so far. We started off with Alley Oop, the idea of downtown basketball hoops in the alleys. Big chair project, getting above the space, elevated, creative, new, unique sitting and hanging spaces. Shadow geometry, brilliant, creative projections to engage our artists and kids and people in dark, hidden spaces. The soapbox corner, public oratory, reviving the art of speaking and sharing publicly. Synchrotricity, putting creative, dynamic, technological lighting in the trees that evolves to their space as we move through it. Rain, rain, go away, umbrellas throughout town and sculptural, dynamic, beautiful installations. Art Alley, engaging the artisans of our community and specifically the Alley District into creative expression throughout the town. The Urban Fern Kingdom, turning our parkade into a beautiful vertical gardening system. The Parkade Night Market, enlivening this courtyard in that space in conjunction with Art Walks to bring life into our night times. And finally, though we're gonna, this is not going to be eligible for people's choice because it costs a penny, but we want to see this happen. This would be really, really cool. Team Hamster with the Hamster Wheel! Remember, you can only vote once. I'm going to vote right now. Okay, okay, let's wrap it up here. Okay, 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 let's close it down here. If you got your ballots, quietly bring the chatter down. We're going to move on very quickly here to the next step. We're very excited, very stoked to give away this awesome raffle prize. Um, my dear friend and realtor at Widmere and um, president of the Whatcom County Realtors Association and super babe, Cerise Noah, uh, she's going to announce the raffle prize. Can, we ha can, we can you draw it, Nick? Good evening. How's everyone doing? Nice. So thank you again for all being here this evening. It's really nice to see all of your beautiful faces and support for the community. Um, so what I'm gonna be doing is announcing this raffle winner. Uh, and what the raffle is, I'm just looking at my notes here. Uh, tonight, is, the raffle is for a night on the town. and. Yeah. This includes um, a limo ride and a night stay at the Chrysalis, dinner at the table, uh, tickets to the Mount Baker Theater, wine, chocolate, spa, and more. So this is an amazing uh, raffle that we have going on this evening. And we are fortunate to have the Whatcom County of Association of Realtors that helps support gathering these prizes. So the number is... Three nine eight three one six. If you if you this is your we need you to get up and get really excited if this is your number. I'll say it again. Three nine eight three one six. Is that woo? Okay, so the winner you'll pick up your prize. Um, at the Sustainable Connections table um, after the event. Thank you, congratulations. Well, that's super exciting. Thank you all. Um, so uh, for those who don't know who I am, um, my name is Cerise Noah. Thank you. Um, I am a superhero who wears many hats. One of my hats is the president of the Whatcom County Association of Realtors, and I am a lover of all things local. 
I am proud to support this event and I'm passionate about the downtown Bellingham and um, supporting this community of all of you wonderful people. So next we have, um, I have the honor of presenting the Superhero Award. So the Superhero Award goes to an innovative performing arts project that continues, that captures the spirit of the of movement through storytelling. This project is about having fun. It is inspirational, whimsical, and interactive. And our winner is Shadow Geometry. And we, and we actually have an award. Thank you so much, congratulations, and next we have Erin. It is my distinct honor to welcome Kelly Linville to the stage to, to present the Mayor's Choice Award. <laughs> well, welcome everybody here tonight. Is there anyone, um, part of my, my goal tonight was to explain why the city would want to sponsor this event. Does anyone not know why we would want to sponsor this event? I didn't think so. I'm, I'm in awe of all the people that have presented tonight. And my hope is, even though we're choosing three, that the city is able to um, implement more of these um, options than the three that get chosen tonight because they're all fabulous. <laughs> Somebody used my line earlier, but uh, I think it's time to unsubdue the subdued city. And everybody that's participating tonight has done a great job of helping us do that. Um, I have an award that I get to present, and uh, I had the privilege of previewing all of these, and I'll tell you, it was really hard to choose one. But I was asked to say why. Why did I choose the one I did? And one of the reasons is it built on things we're already doing. It promoted um, things like beer that we're already known for. <laughs> Yeah, I was hoping that would get something. Um, and it is looking at one of the areas in downtown that many of the, the participants mentioned, which is the parkade and that little parkade plaza that's very underutilized in the city of Bellingham. So uh, the mayor's award goes to Dean Faring for Parkade Night Market. <laughs> Okay, so now is the time you've all been waiting for. You've casted your ballot. I don't know how well they're doing on getting it together. Wow. I, ca I can't even believe it. <laughs> We're going to announce the top three from the people's choice. Everyone's a winner. We all stand behind Kelly's pronounce pronouncement that we want to see all these things happen. And where there's a will and a cash flow, there's a way. So we're going we're gonna to do our damnedest. And we want everyone we name to come up. Coming in, number three. Synchro Tree City. <laughs> And at number two, the Urban Fern Kingdom. Yeah. 
And can we get a big collective drum roll of foot stomping? The People's Choice Award goes to... The Parkade Night Market. <laughs> I guess it just goes to show that great ideas can become reality in the city of subdued excitement. Thank you. Okay, everybody, the people have spoken. I love you people. Thank you all for coming. Thanks to our partners, the, everybody, you guys, these guys, these guys, everybody. I love you.